Okay, uh, we're going to start once again uh, talking about piecewise functions and um, what is a piecewise function. Quite literally, they are functions that are in pieces and um, they are basically um, defined as some kind of f of x um, which is equal to something on the other side and they are in fact honest to God functions they are not relations so that means that if there's a the function like I said is literally in pieces you might have one piece behaving this way another piece behaving this way and um, notice that the vertical line test uh, is obeyed meaning that these are actual functions not just um, not just anything out of the ordinary. So the only thing is that we have, uh, the only difference is that for piecewise functions for different parts of the domain, uh, it's going to uh, obey different rules. So maybe we have x plus 3 on one part of the domain, and let's say x squared minus 1 on another part of the domain. And so we can define a rule saying that x plus 3 is obeyed so long as x is say less than 0 and x squared pl plus 1 takes over when x is greater than or equal to 0. So notice that all parts of the domain are defined there is no overlap in the domain otherwise of course we would start getting two functions for the price of one and all that um, which isn't allowed for a function. So um, we can build a table of values and the table of values will be something like x on one column f of x on the other column and we can define a whole bunch of such values and uh, let's say that we have negative, <coughs> negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 and um, Notice <coughs> that the value of x will depend on um, the value of x, the value of f of x, that is, depends on the value of x we choose. Because depending on the value of x we choose, we have to choose one of these two rules that it's going to have to follow. So that has to be kept in mind. So with minus 3, we go to adding plus 3 because x is less than 0. Negative 3 is definitely less than 0, so when we add plus 3, we get negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. Negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Uh, negative 1, uh, negative 1 plus 3 is, negative, is positive 2. Positive 2, I was going to write negative 2 down. And um, 0, 0 plus 3 is, well, hold on a minute. Now we have to decide, does the 0 belong here, or does it belong here? Well, we check to see carefully whether the zero is in the domain that includes it. Well, here, zero is not included in the domain because x less than zero does not include zero itself. So we go to the second part of the domain where it is included and we uh, substitute accordingly. So for zero, we now have zero squared minus one. And now, well, that's zero minus one, which is minus one. And then we have 1 minus 1, which is 0. 2 squared, 2, well, 2 is greater than 0. 2 squared is 4. 4, four minus 1 is 3. And then 3 squared, well, 3 squared is 9. Minus 1 is 8. So then we go over here. We build a graph. And... we build one that way too. So let's now plot some points. Negative 3, 0, less negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, 0 is there, negative 2, 1 is here, negative 1, 2 is here, but um, 0, negative, or sorry, the next point ought to be 0, 3 because 0 plus 3 should equal 3, but remember 0 is not part of the domain. However, all parts leading up to it are part of the domain, meaning that all parts here, these are all part of the domain, 
and so are these. And this goes forever in the negative direction. But it does not include the point zero 0,3 because, of course, 0 is not part of the domain of that piece of the function. That's where other parts take over. And so you have 0, negative 1 as a definite point, and then 1, 0, that's another point, and then 2, 3, that is here, and then 3, 8, 3, that's 1, 2, 3, and that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's all the way up here, and we can see we get half of a parabola which I'm trying to carefully draw. So as you can see here, there's two pieces to the function. Definitely two pieces to the function. Uh, this function ends suddenly over here. It does not include uh, zero, x equals zero itself, whereas this one does include x equals zero as part of its domain. And both of these are part of one legitimate function. It follows all the rules of functions, and that for every x value, there is one y value, not more than one. Okay, and that is my talk on piecewise functions, live from Starbucks.